National Assembly. We'll be joined as well by Tabitha Mutinda, who's a nominated senator, and also Dan Manzo, who is a senator of McWinney this morning. Right, let's see what is we have off the press this morning. Fresh off the press, we begin with the standard, and this is what you're waking up to the front page of the standard this morning. This is politics of fuel. Calls for probe. It says here, opposition leader Raila Odinga has renewed his call that the G2G oil deal is between private entities and not the Saudi government. He has called for the resignation of officials involved in the deal and a probe by the ESCC. Auditor General and EPRA. But MP says Parliament has documents. So we are eagerly waiting for this. You can follow the story on page 6 of the Standard today. Three companies at the heart of the saga, but they have come out to say the deal is above board. You can follow the story uh, inside the Standard window. Treasury used to get money to finance oil deal also is given here. Uh, that is uh, 5.9 billion shillings. The initial budget that had been approved by the National Assembly before the start of the 2022-2023 financial year, the ministry had been allocated 5.9 billion shillings. The finance ministry is said to have invoked Article 223 that gives it power to spend money and seek parliamentary approval later. Through this, it is said to have allocated Ministry of Energy money that was not in its budget. And remember also, this is where we have the telecom deal. Using this same Article 223, where we had uh, that particular transaction that happened with the Helios without the approval of the Parliament as well. Is this article being abused? Well, that's up in the air as far as clarity is concerned. You can follow the story on page 4 of the Standard this morning. And we have 43 billion shillings. It says, yeah, it, it however ended up spending 43 billion shillings drawn from the consolidated fund and another 20 billion shillings that had been raised by the ministry's internal operations without approval by MPs. With the ministry calling up Article 223 of the Constitution to assess to access the funds, the article gives the government leeway <coughs> excuse me, to spend an emergency or on emergencies without having the fat sick having to fat sick parliamentary approval, but later gets the approval through a supplementary budget. According to budget documents, some of the money was used to pay subsidies to private financial enterprises. You can follow the story inside the standard. We have a bite there from Rilo Dinga saying the CS for Energy and Petroleum Chir Chir and National Treasury, CS Jugunandungo have certainly committed criminal offences, abused office and gone against the constitution. That is a story that you want to follow on the politics of fuel. Looking at the teaser, Aviation Authority reawakens Ruto's Western Land, Western Land Ghosts. That is on page 10. That is the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. And we are held for conceding election defeat. You can follow the story on World Pages of the Standard today on page 27. And World Bank to give Kenya 1.8 trillion shillings in loans and aid as well. This is on page 23. Australia bats its way to greatness. You can follow the story of Cricket World Cup there on page 38 of the Standard this morning. The Daily Nation underwater is a splash this morning. Catastrophe. Record rains have pounded several parts of the country over the past week, leaving death and devastation in their wake. 20 people dead, more than 80,000 families displaced and 33 counties drenched. Tourism has also been hit as floods submerge cost hotels. SGR cargo has been delayed while towns, estates and villages across the country have been marooned. El Nino is here and the toll is climbing. You can follow the story on page 4, 5, 6 and 7 of the Daily Nation this morning. Brizan, Raila tells Chilchiru and Dungo over oil deal as Mayor Leader Raila Dinga has called for the immediate resignation of Energy Cabinet Secretary Davis Chilchir and his National Treasury counterpart Njuguna Ndungu over the government-to-government -government oil deal. Mr. Odinga further demanded that the government tables evidence of an existing government-to-government -government deal and of Kenya having paid for the fuel in Kenya shillings. This is on page 10 uh, of the Daily Nation this morning. Looking on the side but there, it's a miracle baby transfused while in womb born healthy for melodious Mora. It's melodious indeed. The journey to the motherhood has been one of pure heartache and agony. Six years and five miscarriages until yesterday. What a joy for the mother and what a bundle of blessings there. You can follow the story on page three. 
Kibor's 29 children contest will and fight over 16 billion shillings wealth. A section of Tycoon's family challenges his will, claiming that it is not a true reflection of his wishes and that he was not mentally stable at the time he wrote it. You can follow the story on page 12 of The Daily Nation. Fuel and electricity prices to go up on proposed April levy. Right, we're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Here it is. Fuel and electricity prices are set to increase on proposed changes to the law to double a levy charged on the two products that's to support the operation of the sector regulator. And that is a story that you have on page 27 of the Daily Nation this morning. Let's see what we have on top there. There's no teaser. You have all the stories on the sidebar. Maize rise tax waivers cost taxpayer 16 billion shillings. Could be higher as CS didn't disclose surrendered cash as a result of sugar imports. You have a story on page 6 of the Daily of the Star this morning. Three injured as exam papers chopper crashes in Wajir. And you can see the fuselage of the helicopter there uh, with the rotor blade really broken. Uh, it is it is, of course, a tragedy that uh, we thank God that no one died, though injured. Wreckage of a helicopter that crashed at Wajir Airport during the pilot, injuring the pilot and two passengers who were escorting KCC examination materials at Arabajaha. You can follow the story inside the star as well. Looking at the teaser there, Met predicts heavy rains, ones of fake weathermen. And you can see the reality on the ground there, a man trying to help a woman not to be submerged in the waters there. Uh, this is how the current state of play is as far as the floods are concerned. And of course, the World Meteorological Authority or Department has warned that this will continue apace until April next year. So, floods are here with us. We should also take care that we're not swept away. Raila targets CSS uh, Chechir and Dungu as Middle East oil deal gets markier. NCSC to probe Natimbea over alleged head speech remarks, ethnic contempt as well. We got the other story on page 8 of the star this morning. Moaziri Kichinjioni, that is a splash that is on the front page of the Taifaleo. And it says, Mabadiliko, Katika Vikal via Hivi Majuzi, Baina Ya Rais na Moaziri, Ya Fichuka, Ishara, the Hiri Kua. Badi yao watafutwa kazi zilizo ziliji tokeza. You can follow the story on page 2 of Taifa Leo this morning where it is all tucked away so the writing is on the wall. There is, of course, as it says here, uh, signs that there could be a cabinet reshuffle. Some will be shown the door as well in uh, reorganization of government to streamline with uh, better that is the agenda of Kenya Kwanzaa administration. Fuel Saga, Raila wants CSS to quit is what is on the People Daily. I didn't mount it for you, but I will show you much, much later. That is what we have on the front page of the People Daily. Uh, piling pressure as mayor leader Raila raises more questions over oil imports, saying Dungu Chechi must go because cost is yet to come down, as promised. Instead, fights back. You have a story on page four of the People Daily this morning. And also, Maranga is calling for vet, vetting of police afresh. Reforms will address weak leadership in agency and improve service delivery. Former, CS, uh, former CJ tells President in a report that also makes recommendation on fighting corruption. You have the story on page 7. Do we have even the money now for a fresh police vetting? Well, when we have such suggestions, of course, we'll see money coming to bear. Equity banks profits hit 36.2 billion shillings in quarter three is also what is on the front page of the People Daily. I will show you that later. Pardon me. We have the People Daily, the Business Daily, that is World Bank is revealing new 1.8 trillion shillings loans for Kenya, about 684 billion shillings to fund public sector projects. Kenya turns to multilateral banks for budgetary support. And uh, you have a story continuing on page uh, two of the Business Daily. The World Bank Group has revealed a new 12 billion shillings loan package for Kenya, expected to be disbursed over the next three years. 
beginning July 2024 in what it says will support the journey to become an upper-middle-income country by 2030. The bank, which is now Kenya's single largest lender, has mobilized the funds through its sister funding agencies as loans and equity investments into Kenyan farms in a major relief to the country that is facing a dollar crisis. The lender revealed that Kenya is ready. It's already accessing about 12 billion shillings. That is 2 billion shillings, I should say, 304 billion shillings. No, $2 billion, which is 304 billion shillings, and the prevailing exchange rate of $1 to 152 shillings in concessional financing every year that will be topped up with fresh commitments through its other lending arms of 8.3 billion shillings. That is a story that you have inside the Business Daily this morning. All right, let's continue. Pess, we see what we have on the front page of, uh, not really on the front page, but down here, Equity Group subsidiaries deliver half of 34.6 billion shillings profit as Kenya tax 20% heat. And also KRA, lawyers clash over client, clash at bank. The Kenya Revenue Authority has opened a new battlefront with, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just clear some flames there, with lawyers as it seeks to collect taxes on interest and on billions of cash held in client accounts. In a far-reaching move that has sent shockwaves in the legal profession and win for Safaricom in national roaming fee tassels. That is fee tassels there. The Reds telcos charge rival operators to connect their subscribers in areas where they lack service uh, coverage in Kenya should be negotiated commercially. A study by the communications regulator has said, adding a boost to Safaricom, which has the largest network spread countywide and tower operators. That story continues inside the Business Daily as well. Let's see what we have across the borders. We go to Uganda, where family and state ties are the heart of Katanga's death. Connections, the demand by relatives by of Henry Katanga for an inquest into the death of businessman after a reported shooting incident on November the 2nd has opened a web of a well-needed family network that weaves through the intricate state power. You have a story on page 2 and 39 of the daily monitor in uganda muslims to lose prime assets over 19 billion shillings debt and we can see here a picture of mufti sheikh shaban ramadan mubaje at a previous event in kampala the uganda muslim supreme council is on the verge of losing its major cities across the country over losing its prime property not major cities uh, losing on the verge of losing its prime property in major cities across the country of an outstanding debt of 19 billion shillings. You can follow the story inside the Daily Monitor. Guards kill sons of school a director and what you missed at the royal wedding. You can have all that spread out for you for your reading on page 7 of the Daily Monitor. And Canon Banja elected new bishop of Namirembe Diocese. That story continues on page 6 of the Daily Monitor. If you're waking up in Uganda, in Tanzania, what growth of banking agent operations means? This is a splash. Agents banking grew significantly in the past three years with customers' deposit and withdrawals both raising sharply, according to a new central bank report. You have a story on page 2 of The Citizen this morning. All right, let's see what we have on the front page of The New Times. Kaspersky official on setting up transparency center in Kigali. The Africa or African region is facing an increasing number of cyber threats. You have a story on page three of the New Times this morning. Let's continue, Pess, and see what we have also down here. Rwanda, Cuba, six or six to bolster bilateral ties. And you can see President Paul Kagame meeting with Cuban Vice President Salvador Valdez Mesa and his delegation at Uruguiro Village on Monday, November the 20th. They discussed on bolstering the existing bilateral cooperation between the two countries. This all continues inside the New Times this morning. New oil deal will ruin me as Kenya loses $100 million in Kisumu port business. You gotta invest Mike Mukula's $270 million fuel facility is going into disuse. This story continues on page 4 and 5 of the East African this morning. Let's continue and see what we have also. On top here, Tanzania shuns the ESC single tourist visa. The Doma says until its concerns over security, immigration, 
and revenue sharing are addressed, it will continue to hold out. You have a story on page 5. And remember also, currently we have the EAC Tourism Expo, uh, which is being held or being hosted here at KICC. And this is the concerns, the trepidations, and uh, of course the hesitations that is being raised by Tanzanians. And you can read the story on page 5 of the East African this week. China Delhi, Xi Macron stressed need for two-state solution. President discussed Palestine-Israel conflict in telephone conversation. And it says President Xi, uh, Xi Jinping and French President Emmanuel Macron both underlined the need to avoid further deterioration of the Palestinian-Israeli situation during the phone conversation on Monday. And they agreed that the two-state solution is the fundamental way of the Palestine-Israel conflict. You can follow the story inside the Channel Daily this morning. Beijing says ceasefire in Gaza key to survival. And you can see Foreign Ministers Wang Yi uh, together with the Organization for Islamic Cooperation Secretary General Hussein Brahim Taha and other members of a delegation from Arab Islamic countries pose for a photo at the Thai State Guest House in Beijing on Monday. All that tucked away inside the China Daily as well. And we must stand together, advocate for Mid East justice. That is also another story inside the China Daily. I promised you that uh, we'll put up the pe People Daily. Here it is. Fuel Saga. Raila wants CSS to quit. That is a story that you want to follow inside the People Daily as well. And it's all about climate talks. President William Ruto can be seen here when he held talks with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz on the sidelines of a G20 compact with Africa uh, conference in Berlin. Germany pledged to support Kenya's mission to Haiti and its peace efforts in the Horn of Africa. The meeting was a precursor of the COP28 to be held in Dubai. You have a story on page 28 of the People Daily today. World Bank pledges 12 billion shillings for Kenya, 12 billion dollars for Kenya. The amount equivalent to 1.8 trillion shillings, which will be disbursed over three years, subject to approval by banks' directors. And you can follow this story inside the People Daily as well. This is half of our budget, uh, which stands at a, a ballpark figure of th around 3.5 billion shillings, trillion shillings, I should say. And vet police boasts afresh. This is what Maragua is saying in his report that uh, has been handed over to the president and also other recommendations uh, inside there is on fighting corruption as well. This is the People Daily. I will be showing you what we do have on the front page of The Economist, the Time magazine as well. But also let me just give you a paper of the day before we have uh, our weather forecast. Leave out you of your imagination, not your history. Leave out of your imagination, not your history. This is what Stephen Covey is saying. Leave out of your imagination, not your history. Are you living out of your imagination or your history? Right, let's see what we have up next in the weather forecast.
Right, Gato has done this for us this morning. Your Excellency, it's about time you take another trip abroad. And you can see State House has been flooded as it is here. Currently being, of course, uh, portrayed here by Gado. Just giving us an indication of what is happening in the country, in the country currently. Also, the DGP, Deputy President is calling for more funds mobilization to try and help victims who have been adversely affected by floods. Did we make an early call that there's no El Nino? And the weatherman also is reporting that beware of fake weathermen. Right, you can also uh, take a copy of a standard for this particular editorial cartoon. In the star, it's not us. And the Blumstorm accusatory fingers being raised as well. You can see there, Murkumen now, he's being depicted as a person who has a halo that is being, of course, uh, lit up by the candle there because of recent uh, spate of darkness that has been bedeviling the country. And from uh, UDA, it's pointing fingers at Uhuru. So he's become the fall guy for everything that is so not working with the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. And we saw that particular as part as well and rejoined from Uhuru Kenyatta that he should not be blamed. He's got nothing to do with the current missives, I should say, of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. This is what Ozone has drawn in the star. We have also the People Daily. Hiya! It's him! And you can see there a dilapidated ramshackle there of a car where El Nino oily scandal as it's being put there by Stano, unrealistic taxes. And Mwanjiko is asking, wow, is this the guy who is being blamed there? And that is Uru Kenyatta who's actually sitting down there being blamed for every, of course, uh, tragedy, so to speak, that is bedeviling the country as far as the cost of living is concerned. It's him, El Nino, unrealistic taxes, it's him. Oil scandal, it's him. Right, so Mwanjiko is wondering, is it him, really? This is what Stano has drawn. And also, still, in the Daily Nation, shh, we can see there, even for the El Nino that is eating away at the, our road, so to speak, is being blamed on him as well. And you can see that UDA Mini Morris as well, right? Everyone is trying to drive it. We have the economic advisors uh, who are gearing this particular Mini Morris, whatever it is going right now. And they've been saying, we're on trucks. Are we truly on trucks? That is a question that we want to also be probing this morning. We're joined this morning by Tabitha Mutinda, also be joined by Farah Malim and also Dan Mazu as well. We continue pace with the conversation. And uh, Tabitha, good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Tony. Yeah, as we just have the cartoons, we shouldn't uh, just remove them yet so that we can de decipher this, what is really happening here. Uh, the blame game that has been going on. Uh, you can see this particular one in uh, the Daily Nation today. Uh, also, we do have the People Daily I've just shown you. Aya, Wanjiko is wondering, is it who truly? And then we have also, it's not us. Blemstorm continues, but good to see you. Fresh from Kakamega, yes. where the senators are. Today they're going to Vihiga, so you are probing the governors, yes. right? But yeah. uh, I want you to comment on the cartoon before we head there. What uh, do you think? Uh, 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 okay, it's... Uh it's the, the, the Kenyans are, have a right to be able to question, to be able to ask, mm -hmm. like uh, what is happening, it is in their right. And uh, definitely, you know, these issues where we are coming from, we are coming from the previous regime, the handshake uh, government where they pledged the previous government yes. into. So, of course, uh, I mean, this, all this was brought about by the previous regime, which was led by none other than uh, Uhuru. So that is where we are, and mm -hmm. uh, that is basically the indication of who brought us into this uh, particular manage, into these particular uh, problems that uh, we are currently uh, in, putting in mind the issues of the subsidy. And that is where you see uh, uh, Honorable Raila is, uh, and uh, the Azimio coalition are really now pushing to take Kenyans back uh, to where we used to be in terms of the subsidy, a subsidy that apparently was not even uh, paid for. We had issues whereby, uh, I mean, suppliers came and uh, said that apparently this subsidy, we have, we've never been paid, you know. So we cannot go back to keep on doing the same things and expect different results, putting in mind that uh, that's where we've been. Uh, the other issue is uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, 
how how I saw the president, the former president, coming out and say, oh, stop blaming me and all that. So it's a, if if it, then it doesn't uh, affect you, it doesn't, I mean, touch you, then why respond? Mm -hmm. You then uh, ignore. Mm -hmm. But since you feel there's a part that you really played, and that is where we are uh, today as a nation, as a government, then. You, you will you will come out and start still uh, defending. We've seen him do that before, and he's still now uh, coming in to do the same defense. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Right. We shall be looking into that as well. Now, as new leader Raila Odinga has demanded for the resignation okay. of the Energy CS Davis Chirichim and his Treasury counterpart Professor Jugunandungu over the controversial 17 billion shillings oil deal, Odinga accuses the two CSs of playing a part in the withdrawal of 42.97 billion shillings from consolidated funds without approval of parliament, part of the money allegedly linked to the 17 billion shillings oil saga. Jeff Kirui, start us off. The controversy surrounding the 17 billion shillings oil saga continue to deepen as Azmio leader Relo Dinga goes after the Energy Cabinet Secretary Davis Chirchir and his Treasury counterpart Professor Njugunandung calling for their resignation. The CS for Energy and Petroleum, Mr. Chirchir, and National Treasury, CS, Jugun and Do, have certainly committed criminal offenses, abuse office, and guns against the Constitution. They stole money from the Constitution Fund in addition to spending money way above what Parliament approved. They must not only resign, they must also be prosecuted. On Saturday, Busia Senator Kio Mtata alleged that in June this year, the National Treasury withdrew 17 billion shillings from the Consolidated Fund, believed to be linked to the fuel contested between the government of Kenya and Angeri. I concur with Senator Senator's suspicion that Angeri is the private financial enterprises funded by the Kenya Shillings 17 billion illegally when the consolidated fund and received by the Ministry of Petroleum and Mining. According to the opposition chief, the government-to-government -government oil deal that was inked by President William Ruto's government reportedly to cushion Kenyans by affording oil marketing companies seamless transactions over dollar shortage globally is shrouded in secrecy and should be made public. I'm asking that the documents be shared with the public. This must be documents signed by a representative of the, the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and the Republic of Kenya, not that of the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum and Adnok Global Trading Limited or Emirates National Oil, Oil Company. Odinga has called on the Office of the Auditor General to investigate the procurement processes in the Ministry of Energy that led to the agreements on the government-to-government -government deal. I'm calling upon her to execute her mandate in this matter and I'll investigate the following. One, the procurement processes engaged in by the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum in recruitment of suppliers and their local agencies. Two, the criteria applied by the G2G arrangement in arriving at the prices at which Kenya is to buy fuel. Raila are further challenging the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to take a proactive role over alleged corruption and conflict of interest by officials in the oil importation saga. The challenge is on the chairman to start working on the matters raised to investigate the following. One, Conflict of interest by government officials in the lead G2G arrangement. Two, bribery and, co and commissions and kickbacks from revenues raised by the G2G arrangement. Jeff, Kirui, KT News. Now, as the National Dialogue Committee enters its final stretch and a crucial week to finalize a process that aims at cooling political temperatures, the government maintains that there are issues that the Kenya Kwanzaa team will not compromise on in the bipartisan talks, indicating a major stalemate as a peace initiative teeters on the brink of collapse. Our reporter, Grace Ganga, has more on this. 
The national dialogue talks are staring into headwinds as the opposition side and the government collide over the measures to lower the cost of living and scrapping or making voluntary the housing levy among salaried Kenyans. If you read the Azimio Manifesto na Kenya Kwanza, both of them ilikuwa na proposal ya housing levy. Lakini kwa sababu wanataka tu kufanya siyasa na kuongea maneno ambaye isaidi nchi ya Kenya ati wanatuambia watoe. Mtu yoyote ambaye ata insist kwamba ati lazima tutoe housing levy bus mkutane ya mazungumzo itaisha mtu warudi kwa barabara afanya ile ambaye alikuwa anataka. Azimio side insists that they will not append the signature to the report if the issue of the cost of living is not addressed. Atuna ni ambaya, ni ane moja, mwanaichi angalao apate chakula. Sababu ya ushuru kupanda, mafuta kupanda, ni wenzetu kupandisha ushuru. Walipotoa 8%, pale uru kenyata alituachia VAT, ndiyo mafuta ili double, ikatoka 8%, ikaenda 16%, ikatoka boto, ikaenda wapi? Awa Kenya, awajatuma azimio kwenda kukaa pale, kuongea maneno ya viti na vieo. Maneno ya at the creation of the office of the prime minister, or the office of the official leader of opposition. Iyo maneno ikae uko, muturudia hapa msebe wale wa mekataa kumbisha chini kadama maisha, and I want to speak as an elder of the church. The Kamwene Group Forum, led by NAC Kenya Party leader Martha Karua and Jubilee Secretary General Jeremiah Kioni, who are part of the Azimio coalition, say the talks have been a waste of time. There is no need of talking about that document if it's not addressing the cost of living, or why would we bother with it? If it is not addressing the, the invasion uh, of Jubilee by UDA, what is the use of that document to us? Bombers, if those two basic minimums are not met, reduction in the cost of living and uh, paying fidelity to the law as regards political party. Leave Jubilee alone. Do your own thing and let us do our own thing. The dialogue team spearheaded by Majority Leader Kimani Shumwa and Wiper Party Boss Kalonzo Musioka had to halt their retreat to conclude their report last week so as to give the cost of living a more extensive discussion. The team is this Wednesday expected to have a final meeting with Treasury to discuss matters cost of living after which they will give a copy of their report to their respective party leaders that is President William Ruto of Kenya Kwanza and Raila Odinga of Azimio Coalition you see, there are, there are proposals on the table, uh, principally that those that touch on uh, taxation and uh, uh, you know, something like the housing fund, which uh, is, is also falls within that ambit. And uh, it's those issues that we want to engage the National Treasury further on uh, before we are able to make a final determination on the way forward. NADCO have until Tuesday next week to finalize their report and table it in Parliament for consideration in efforts to quell temperatures between the government and the opposition. Grace Nganga KT News, Nairobi. Now elsewhere, leaders from Mount Kenya region and uh, the Kamwene Group Forum have accused President William Ruto of poor governance, saying threats and intimidation will not silence them from fighting for the rights of Kenyans. They implored upon the president to stop governing with threats and instead listen to the cries of Kenyans led by NAC Kenya party leader Martha Karua. The leaders said the cost of living should be considered as Kenyans are overburdened and they will not stop or they will stop at nothing until their voices are heard. Kama mtu anataka kutusafirisha kwenda binguni pengine Mungu atamsafirisha mbele yetu. Yes. Lakini we are not going to be intimidated. And anybody who sends attack dogs to insult leaders asking how many votes we got open the server yes, what sir. are you fearing open the server open the server we verify how many votes kama ni mbili tutashukuru in fact we have had a very easy time because we are not telling them we are going and they tell us if you people don't talk we are going to die we are not a political party we are ready now as a movement as a forum to talk on behalf of our people and even to look for things that could be affecting them and look uh, and uh, have a, um, a proactive way of tackling them. Meanwhile, Kenya and Germany have agreed to escalate their cooperation in green investments. It follows the outcomes of the Africa's climate summit in Nairobi, in which Germany 
was one of the central players. The two countries appreciated that it was inevitable to invest in Africa due to its competitiveness, uh, competitiveness, I should say, for climate action, climate development and resilience. In a bilateral meeting in Berlin between President Willem Ruto and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, peace and security in the Horn of Africa also took center stage. Scholz appreciated the key role that Kenya continues to play in the region, particularly in Sudan south sudan as well the democratic republic of congo and somalia president ruto briefed the chancellor on the efforts of Igad in taking a leadership role in the jeddah process that is led by saudi arabia and the united Na united states of america the two leaders also discussed the role of kenya in the stabilization of haiti as part of a multinational security support mission for the caribbean nation Former Kakamega Governor Wycliffe of Ambetsa Oparanya has suffered a major setback after the High Court froze his assets in the ongoing graft probe in relation to the alleged embezzlement of 1.3 billion shillings during his two term administration. Legislative Justice Esther Minor of the Mili Money Anti Corruption High Court issued the preservation orders for the property belonging to Oparanya, including his current house, valued at 89 million shillings for a period of six months pending conclusion of investigations by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. The judge barred Oparanya, his agents or associates from interfering in any way with 28.9 million shillings held in trust funds. And signature collections to dissolve Meru County have started in earnest with some members of the county assembly and lobby groups spearheading the drive. This comes after another petition was filed in court to have Governor Kawira Mongaza impeached just a few days after the county chief was saved from a second impeachment attempt by the Senate. Bildin Waliwala has more. The strained relationship between Meru Governor Kawira Mwangaza and members of County Assembly persists even after she survived her second impeachment by the said members. A third impeachment attempt is underway a few days after Kawira was saved by the Senate from another impeachment. According to the governor, it has become difficult to run the county with the numerous frustrations from the County Assembly who are also planning to impeach eight members of the county executive. Given this, the embattled governor is in support of the collection of signatures to dissolve the county. On Monday, lobby groups kick-started the signature collection drive. The people of Meru are a distressed lot due to the endless uh, politicking that is happening in Meru. So uh, we started this process that is going to actually uh, help the common mananchi. Siri tumesema tukiwa akina mama, kitu ya tuataka kufanya saizu wataka to dissolve we Meru County. Na tuataka tutoke na nguvu yetu yote. According to the lobby groups, the impeachment attempts are denying Meru people their right to enjoy development that is supposed to be brought by devolution, and it is time for them to choose their leaders of choice again. Hii tumefanya kwa nini? Tumefanya kwa sababu tumeshindwa kufanya kazi MCA wanye tulichagua. Wame impeachin governor mara atatu. Mala ya kwanza kwa assembly ambayi kufika senate ya piri ikaenda senate na ya tatu ikaenda senate. Some of the members of the county assembly are of the view that dissolution of the county is the right direction to take to end the unending fights and misunderstandings. Sis wanainchi tunataka kuwaregezea pawa zao kwa sababu sisi tumeshindwa na kufanya kazi na mimi nimeokoka sitaki kuwa na kura mshahara ya bure kwa sababu niliambia watu wake yako nitawafanyia kazi na kwa sababu ile shinda tuko nayo ni kuwa hatujui kazi yetu mimi naomba tu hii pawa ambayo wananchi wametupea 
Though they are enforcing Article 1 of the Constitution where all sovereign power belongs to the people and they are taking their power back, Article 192 of the same Constitution states that a county can be suspended in a state of emergency arising out of internal conflict or war or any other exceptional circumstances if the President is satisfied that such an action is warranted. If the president agrees with the reasons to dissolve the county, a commission of inquiry will be created. And if their findings satisfies the head of state, then an election will be held within 90 days, though the Senate may at any time terminate the suspension. All right, Berlin has given you there the rigmarole there of the process propriety that uh, is involved in the impeachment or the dissolving of this particular county as it were and uh, we just want also to take that as uh, our catnip issue of discussion this morning allow me again to introduce our panelist earlier we had the voice of tabitha Mutinda, who is a nominated uh, senator also we have with us dan manzo who is a uh, senator of bakwini farah malib is joining us as well who is a member of parliament the dab and after of issues that we'll discuss the floods in uh, the northern uh, region of the country uh, also the issues of the clammy fingers from the governor as far as corruption is concerned now we had the freezing of assets of Oparanya. uh was it also providentially that we had the senate also in kakomega probing Oparanya's uh, uh, tenure and the issue of of course the governors who maybe they have been in office and now they're senators uh, where we can see they are the people overseeing uh, those dockets or accountability of the previous or the current uh, regime uh, and they have also their record in the past tenure as governors but let's just put this in context and the politics of fuel as well we shall be looking at it as well so let's hear from uh, senator dan mazo you're not in kakamega yesterday were you no, you're not. No, he's not part of that committee. You're not. Oh, I'm, he's I'm not, not part in of that committee. Which, which, you and the, which committee are you in? I'm in a committee of delegated legislation. Delegated and legation. Committee of agriculture. Of agriculture. Yes, uh, not in that particular one. And the CEO of a parliamentary. <laughs> 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 that one you don't want to mention that because also we know you're in that particular fellowship of the parliament. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes you, yeah, you're yeah. the one who sings once this. A year, once a year, um, we organize, uh, you know, national, national prayer breakfast. breakfast. Uh -huh. So I co-chair co that with Honorable Chep Konga of National Assembly. Uh, it's just a, 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 a one one year's one, one event of the year, mm. but you plan it a whole year. You plan it the whole year. Yes, so that uh, it's, it's it's a day the leaders or the elected leaders dedicate the nation to. Mm -hmm. to God and um, it, this one is also done together with the Muslims. Ah, okay, we, it is interreligious, interdenominational. Inter interdenominational, mm -hmm. interreligious, so everybody participates and the members participate. In they the history of National uh, Prayer Breakfast, Farah has not, because uh, Farah has a very good baritone. Yeah, but next he, time... He never, you never, <laughs> or do, you, do you do normally do recruitment in the, in the, the next one we want to where last, everyone is auditioning to, last time to we were join looking, the choir? Last time we were looking for Honorable Farah Malim to read the Quran. <laughs> So I've now put him on notice that in the next prayer breakfast, you read the Quran for the nation. You can't sing because, uh, so Farah, you, you never sing for the Mujin in the morning. No, hmm? the, hmm? The, the, if you look at the, the genesis of this thing, how it started, yes. it's mainly started by American white evangelicals. Yes. Who, who came to, you know, basically have a foothold also in the political leadership of uh, the continent, Africa, in certain context. So it's, it's, it's not entirely a free thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if we, we, we can, but then own it ourselves and, 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 and use that noble, what they call idea for our own self. In which case, you have to have a Muslim uh, co chair also. You can just have two yes. co chairs. Yes. Now you have a Catholic and you have a Protestant. Am I right? Yes. yes. And then what about the Muslims? I mean, it yeah, yes, yes. becomes entirely but a Christian we, we, affair. We, 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 you, you, you know, you've not considered it yourself until well, now you're speaking. If I'm invited to be co chair on behalf of the Muslims, I'll be there. Why? Yeah, but, there, but there's no problem. I mean, uh, I mean, if we come together as, uh, uh, to pray to God, we have only one God, by the way. Yeah, yeah. All the Abrahamic faith. We are Christians and Muslims uh, believe in, uh, in, in God. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in, uh, in uh, sorry, uh, Jesus, uh, Moses, uh, Adam, all the prophets. We, we share that in common. Mm -hmm. uh, but we call them prophets. Some of you call them uh, Jesus a prophet. And others call him a God. We don't call him God. He's mm -hmm. just a human being like us. Mm -hmm. But born through a miracle. Mm -hmm. 
So, so I mean, we have no problem with that. We have no problem with coming together and praying for this country mm. as, as Christians and Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, but certain, we, 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 you know, sometimes a good idea can come, uh, um, uh, an idea which has an ulterior motive can come from anywhere. Mm. But when you own it, then you use it for your own things. When a white evangelical comes to African parliaments, you know, racist, right-wing, Euro-American, and it promotes a certain thing, always take it with a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. But you can take it yourself and own it and use it for your domestic, what you call uh, needs, mm -hmm. and, and, and basically divorce yourself from the rest. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you, yeah, yes, well, then well. give it a thought mm -hmm. and, and, and let's bring the, our people together. Yeah, so at least uh, in the next uh, National Prayer Breakfast as well, we should see. I will have absolutely no problem. Being you, part of a co-chair. you part of a co-chair. <laughs> no, yeah, not, not, just, not, just, not just as a flock. And you'll be uh, joining uh, Danson Mungatana as well uh, as a choir conductor. <laughs> no problem. Uh, right, we can yeah. conduct that one. We'll also conduct our own <laughs> prayers in our own... Uh, yes, that's in, right. In the Muslim fashion. What, what happened in Dubai yes. uh, during the war, towards the end of the Second World War, uh -huh. it was so tough and difficult. Uh, and uh, when uh, members of parliament went to... To parliament in America, they, they didn't know what, how to start the day mm -hmm. because the war was, you know, a top notch. Yes. Uh, and uh, just a few members, uh, one member told the other members where they had gathered, mm -hmm. let's pray. Mm -hmm. And uh, immediately after that, they, 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 you know, the, wo the war took a different twist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and that's how it started. So they decided to be commemorating that uh, once a year. And uh, then it developed, uh, it went, became a movement which went to many parliaments in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, so ordinarily uh, the American prayer breakfast is, we invite also Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and um, you, you know, the, the, the king of, uh, King Abdallah was the chief guest last mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So, so you, 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 you bring the world together. It's, it's a way of leaders say, first of all, we thank God for giving us leadership. Just as we pray every time we begin a session in parliament. And then, uh, and then you you have a day you dedicate the nation mm. to God, so that you declare that you are a nation belonging to God. That's what usually happens. Uh, now, when I when, when I came in Dubai, you, there were the cartoons, yeah, and there was this story of it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, let me try and retrieve those cartoons. And I, and I thought uh, you wanted it, to comment on it as know, well. You know, yeah, President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, has, has come out clear that he cannot be blamed for everything. First mm. and foremost. Uh, uh, President Ruto was his deputy, and the parties. In fact, he they had shared government 50-50. Right. Uh, and uh, they had uh, formed. Can you, uh, don't, I, I can see you. You started it. Uh, we <laughs> want to take a short break so uh, that we can plumb yeah, deeper into let me, it. Let me just because I know if we start, we want to go for uh, for the short break. Uh, my director is calling for the short break. We yes. take a short break when we circle back. Of course, we begin with that. We, let, we let follow what is happening also with the Senate from Kakamega. Tabitha will tell us uh, they were in Kakamega or Paranya's uh, assets has been frozen so far trying to fight corruption uh, that is the way to go right now and even as we're talking ab about prayer breakfast will you be going for the U european union prayer breakfast which yes, is I've this seen is on an the, this, the 5th of 5th, december for 5th of december yes i've seen an invitation you've so seen an invitation we'll discuss it with the uh, with parliament okay yes all right so make sure you pray for us as well there as you are going for the european union prayer breakfast we take a short break right now when we